Hello YouTube family, it's Sunday. I am here to update you. Um, it has been a few weeks since I updated you last. I have weighed in one more time. I think I told you all in the very beginning that I was going to weigh in once a month for about the first six months, maybe the first six to eight months, not really sure yet, haven't decided. But um, I've weighed in since the last time I talked to you after the doctor's visit that I had. Um, I believe I was at 45 pounds down when I talked to you last at the three-month checkup with my surgeon. And I have weighed in October the 1st. So, yeah, it's been a while. And anyway, I am down as of October 1st, 52 pounds. And I will weigh again on November the 1st. So we'll see where I am then. Fingers crossed it's more weight lost. Um, I feel better. I am I think I can tell in my clothes definitely, definitely that I have lost um, more pounds. I am discovering I have a bigger problem than I expected to have as it has gotten cooler here in New York and I have no clothes to wear. So <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a good thing, but you know, tad bit of a bad thing in the fact that I don't want to go buy clothes because if I go buy clothes and then I grow out of them then I'm just wasting money so then I think well I'll just go to Old Navy or I'll go somewhere Walmart Target one of those but I just haven't done it because again it's just mentally in my brain don't go wasting money anyway so this is where I sit today in my first world problems <laughs> as a bariatric patient so, I have heard from a number of you, and thank you so, so much, those of you who have uh, joined my YouTube channel and are following my journey through this new way of life. I so appreciate you and your kind and generous words and the helpful hints I do hope are helpful. I've actually had a few people contact me via email, um, a private message, and have asked me questions, and I hopefully have been able to help you a little. I have two friends that... Uh, friends now that through this that uh, one is doing surgery this week and one is doing surgery in December so I'm super super excited for them cannot wait to officially welcome you to the U losers club and I think that was the greatest phone call I got when I was in the hospital someone I know who also had bariatric surgery she called me in the hospital and she welcomed me to the losers club it's pretty special anyway so let's get down to business okay number one I gave you the update on my weight loss and uh, still off the pills. I'm still on cholesterol, but again, like I discussed before, I think that I will continue to stay on just for genetics and health reasons. I think, I actually think I'd rather stay on it than I would to come off of it. So um, that is where we stand physically. Um, and little FYI for you girls that are going through this, guys, you don't wanna listen to this one. I've lost my boobs. I, I mean, lost them. To the point that I think I'm a little, I'm a little upset over it. <laughs> I don't want the weight back, but of all places, why couldn't that come from my stomach? Why couldn't that weight come off from my stomach rather than the girls? But I'm learning to deal with it and realize again, first world problems. Number two, hair loss. Can we discuss hair loss? Oh, so when I first started this journey, I was going to be the exception to the rule. I was going to be the girl that did everything she was supposed to do, which I have. I have tracked my protein daily to obsession. My nutritionist says don't use that word, but to obsession. Uh, I have tracked my calories, even though they tell me not to worry about that. I have tracked my um, water intake. I have tracked to make sure I've taken my vitamins. I did my blood work. Everything has been great. Guess what? Losing hair by the handfuls totally freaking out about this okay I mean totally freaking out every person that I have spoke to that has had this surgery has said to me calm down get back off the ledge every person goes through this and I know that right here in between the skin but here I don't know that and it is freaking me out but I'm talking to enough people about it and telling enough people about it that it's freaking me out that I'm trying to really tell myself it's not a big as deal. Everyone says 
you're going to lose it about the three to three and a half, four month mark, which is exactly where I am. And like I said, in, in the shower, it is the first time it happened. And it was, it, it's not like I'm missing patches of hair. Okay. So let, let me just get that straight. It is just strands, right? So I pull my hair and instantly, as you can see, I have a little bit of hair. It, it's instant hair like that. There are sometimes it'll be four and five strands at the time. But again, still, I, I'm not bald. I don't have any patches of hair missing. But this is a lot thinner than it used to be. Now, when I was a child, uh, right up through the time I was in my early 20s, my hair was so thick you could barely get a rubber band around it once, much less twice. Once I got heavier and ended up on the blood pressure medicine and the beta blocker, my hair thinned out like almost overnight. It was insane how much my hair thinned out. I did not attribute it to that fact. I, I didn't know. Um, I later found out, thanks to the advent of all this information on the internet, that yes, indeed, that will happen with those medications. So my big hope was that when I came off those medications, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, I'm going to get all my hair back. I'm going to have a head full of hair and I will never again complain about having thick hair. That has not happened. I continually <laughs> keep losing it. And again, sister to sister, sister to brother, it's freaking me out. But I really am trying to be logical, intelligent, but it's freaking me out. So just know if you're doing the surgery, you're going to lose your hair too. If you don't, God bless you. You are one of the tiny, tiny, minute number of people that do not lose their hair. But if you do, which I believe you will, it's going to be okay. We're all going to live through this together because, well, we're doing this life thing together, right? Okay. One good thing that has happened, and I'm trying to figure out how to word it because it is a blessing and it's a curse. Because on one side, it's really good. On the other side, it's scaring the bejesus out of me. My appetite has grown. So before when I would go out with my friends and I would get the appetizer with somebody, that was plenty. Now I'm pretty much eating an appetizer by myself. If you want to look at, you know, portion size, I'm still eating about three ounces of meat. And only reason that I'm doing that is because I want to be able to eat vegetables as well, because it was to the point that I was eating the three ounces of meat and that's all I could eat. I couldn't eat vegetables. I couldn't, certainly couldn't eat bread, um, pastas or anything of that nature. But now tonight, for instance, I went out with my friend, Erica, we went to a beer garden. I got a beer. I drank half of the beer. It was a, it was like a Hefeweizen, which is, you know, a heavier beer. I couldn't finish that because I wanted to be able to eat. We got the sliders. I took the bread off and ate the little slider things. I ate two of the slider things. I'm going to say it was about maybe three ounces of meat. Maybe. If that. But we'll go three ounces. Then we ordered chicken wings. Came six in there. I ate two of the chicken wings. So that's going to be about an ounce of meat. So probably four ounces of meat. And I was able to eat five french fries. That's a whole lot. Especially drinking a beer with it. That's a whole lot more than I've been able to eat. And that scares me a little um, because it's like I don't, I don't want to fall off the wagon, so to speak. Those of you that have weight issues, you'll understand the appetite's increasing, so I'm afraid I'm going to increase. Um, I still don't think I'm eating, I mean, I'm tracking my calories. I have yet to go over 2,000 calories and then... I think the most I've eaten in one day as of now is maybe 18 to 1900. And that was a day where I had, you know, appetizers at before dinner with friends. And then we waited a while. We had a glass of wine and then we had dinner. So that was out at the lake house and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it is a blessing to know that I will be able to actually eat a meal, feel satisfied, not only mentally, but physically. Because I was physically satisfied, but mentally I was not there. I was still thinking I need more food. And those of you that have weight issues, you understand. Those of you who are human understand. You have in your brain 
that you should be able to eat a certain amount of food. And when it comes to the table and you can't eat that, there's a mental disconnect. And that is, again, what I'm fighting so much. And I'm trying to train myself. But it, it's really showing me, again, over and over again, that this is a tool. My surgery is amazing and has done awesome things for me, but it is a tool. It is not a fix-all. It is not something that they're going to give you this small stomach and you're going to go, okay, done. Not going to eat anymore. I only eat this. No, you still have the mental part with it that you want to have a snack in between. You want to grab a little bit here and grab a little bit there. And I guess if you're one of those people that needs to constantly have, just make sure what you're grabbing you can eat and it's not going to put on pounds, right? So celery, carrots, things like that. But Again, this is the Sunday struggle. I'm assuming because the people I've met through this, I'm not the only one that struggles with this. But the tool is definitely helping because I can't just gorge on food like I was or else I'd be sick. So that's good. So I'm hoping that through this process that number one, I'm going to learn my portions the biggest thing, then that's the tool that's helping me. Second of all, I really hope that I'm going to be able to mentally learn my portions. And the most important thing is that I will be able to know the triggers of when I am full and when I am just wanting food. Am I really hungry or am I not really hungry? And I had this struggle before I had the surgery. Why I considered the fact that <laughs> the surgery was going to magically disappear doesn't magically disappear. But, 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 but have, have faith, my friends. It does help. It does. Because again, you cannot physically eat any more than a certain amount or else you'll be sick. And trust me, you don't want to be sick, right? Who wants to be sick? Nobody. Okay. One thing that I touched on last time, but I never got to was the eating and drinking together. I mentioned it. Still, still, still the hardest thing for me in this, in this process. I am a Southern girl. I am a heavy drinker and I'm not talking about alcohol per se. I'm talking about fluids. I drink, um, before I had my surgery, I have a 64 ounce mug or 52 ounce mug rather that I keep at my desk. I drank at least two of those a day, at least two. That's 104 ounces a day before I ever left the office. When I got home, I will have drink. I sit down to have dinner. I have something to drink, whether it's unsweetened green tea, water, whatever it is. I was not a, a sugar drinker, so I didn't drink like calories in um, soda or things like that, but I still drank a lot. I'm always constantly drinking. So they tell me in the nutritionist's office that I should not drink 30 minutes before a meal. I should not drink during the meal and I should not drink an hour at 30 minutes to an hour after the meal. But don't forget, Sunday, you have to get 64 ounces minimum in your system every day. Total mind cluster. Like, how am I supposed to make this happen? And then I just naturally want to drink. I want to drink my iced green tea. I want to drink the water. But I can't do it with these parameters. So confusing, right? Right? You understand. Confusing. But then I say to myself, okay, I can do this. The biggest thing is with the eating and drinking, if you eat before, then your stomach's kind of got water and whatever in it and you can't get as much food in. So you need to prepare your stomach for the food you're about to eat. Don't drink while you're eating because your stomach needs to recognize when it's really full of nutrients and calories and real food as opposed to that stuff, the nutrients and stuff on top of water. And then it's going to turn it all to mush, and push it through your system faster. You're going to get hungrier sooner than you would had you let it digest in your body and let the digestive system do what it does. And I don't, I don't really understand all. I just know you're not supposed to do it. And I can tell a difference when I don't. I would say since my surgery, I am 85% on the money. I do what I'm supposed to do. 15% of the time. I just say, screw it. It's, I, I just want something to drink. So this, again, mind issue. This is something that I have to work on. This is something that, again, that I struggle with 
before because I just, I'm constantly drinking ice cream tea. I'm constantly drinking water. If you go out and have a, a glass of wine with dinner, you understand. See, you understand. I know you do. You're shaking your head. You get it. You understand. So, these are things you need to work on, okay? Just do it before you ever have your surgery. Trust me. I did it for about... I guess it was about three months is when I really started working on it and trying to not eat and drink together. This is running long. I'm so sorry. But I would I would not fix my drink. I would just take my meal in there, eat it, t try to take as long as you can to eat, 30 minutes at least, which is so hard, and then wait an 30 minutes to an hour after and then get something to drink. So this is a few issues you're going to deal with. But... You can handle it. You totally got this. It's all good. You're going to handle it because I'm handling it. And if I can handle it, you can handle it. So, okay, that's just a quick update for you. Um, probably useless information for you, but I don't think so. I think you need to know these things if you're having this surgery. And again, in the comments below, please let me know what you think. If you have any questions or any tips that you need, please feel free to um, either put them in the comments or PM me and I will gladly answer any and all questions you have. And thanks again so much for watching my channel and joining with me on this journey. And I want to hear all about yours. Okay. Have a good night.